it's a novel product uh, and basically it's a once a day dosing product that's basically studied for tardive dyskinesia and it's studied basically over one their pivotal study of connect three of six weeks and then the long-term extension data going out to 48 weeks but it was fast-tracked to the FDA because one there's nothing else for tardive dyskinesia two it meets an unmet need for our, for patients with tardive dyskinesia that has never existed in there's no other therapy that's ever existed for that population so the FDA fast-tracked it because it was a breakthrough designation. That, that's, that's a very good question. It's, it's important for us to understand when a new drug gets approved, where does it fit into our treatment paradigm? When do we use it? Do we use it first? Do we use it somewhere in the middle? Do we use it towards the later part of it? If you look at the pre-ingresa landscape for, for tardive dyskinesia treatments, you know, there's nothing approved for it. But what had some data on it? There was data with regards to tetrabenazine that was shown in one study, and people empirically used tetrabenazine. The problem with tetrabenazine was twofold. One was the tolerability of it because of the pharmacokinetics of tetrabenazine, the multiple times a day dosing. But the bigger factor was the issue for psychiatric patients because of tardive was the concern about suicidality and worsening depression. This was something that really, you know, for patients that I offered this to, was a problem because many patients would, would could resist going on tetrabenazine because of that. And even if the patients were amenable to it, when they would talk it over with their psychiatrist, as I would ask everybody to talk with their psychiatrist when I'm changing regimens, their psychiatrist would, would uh, be very cautious about it because their concern was this is a patient with schizoaffective disorder, schizophrenia or bipolar, or other mood disorders, and worsening their depression was a concern for them. The suicidality war a warning was a, risk, was a risk and a concern for them as well. So in the pre-Ingresa pre day, uh, days, we had tetrabenazine that we used with limited use because of safety issues and in terms of, uh, in terms of tolerability as well. And then besides that, the other medications people have used, some oral medications like baclofen, people have used medications like anti-epileptics like uh, levetiracetam, people have used anticholinergics with mixed results. And one of the problematic features has been that these medications have not been that very effective in terms of treating tardive. And of course, there have been the additional side effects that these medications bring to it. There's some data on vitamin B6 that's been helpful, but again, it, not, nothing that rises to the level of a phase three study that shows differentiation, nothing that shows benefit and separation from placebo that uh, medicine does. Safety, efficacy, absolutely. And again, the first and only therapy that's approved for this as opposed to the medications that we've used. And again, the, in going even a step back from those therapies that we talked about, we talked about tetrabenazine, we talked about other therapies, but the first three options that we talk about with patients in the, again, the pre ingresa days were, could we reduce the dosage of the antipsychotic, which was a problem because it may worsen their psychiatric symptoms. So psychiatrists were, were not amenable to it and patients were concerned because to treat their tardive, we were potentially going to worsen their psychiatric symptoms. Can we remove it, which was a non-starter for many of the patients because it's, these are long-term medications for them. Or third option, could we replace it with something else? And many times these patients have tried multiple antipsychotic medications to get to the stable combination. To talk about reversing it, such as by, by removing it, reducing it, or replacing it were non-starters. They were important from our point of view in trying to understand the pathophysiology and trying to undo the pathophysiology of tardive, but they were not non-starters from a practical point of view.